This is the um, repository. This is a repository I've put together for the Pimeroni Blinked, which is an eight LED add-on for the Raspberry Pi. It just clips straight on the top of your Raspberry Pi and gives you eight programmable LEDs. Now, this was actually put together for DockerCon last year. Um, Pimeroni very kindly designed this for me um, for one of my hacks and it's had a lot of mileage since then. This is a picture that was taken and is on their shop and if you don't have one yet you can go over to the shop and pick one up. They're not too expensive. So there's a Python library for the Blink code and it has a lot of really neat examples which over here. Now we've got things like a Larson scanner if you remember Knight Rider things that will show you how much memory pressure there is. Um, we can control the LEDs over an MQTT queue. We can just show a red, green, blue kind of color. Um, and this code is, is really useful, but it's in Python. Uh, if you're in, into Go, Golang, if you're becoming a gopher, then you can run some code and start off with my Golang example. What I wanted to do we show you that um, a guy called Richard has put together a pull request and I want to merge that into my repository. What he's done is he's added he's the first four of the five examples and they look really good. Uh, I've done a quick test on them. Um, there's some feedback but I'm, I'm kind of happy to merge this. So first of all Richard's pushed this up to his own repository with the branch of first five. Now there's two ways of going forward here. If I look at my um, at my Raspberry Pi, I can do something like a go get of the repository. Uh, that will set up a go um, folder for me with my code. and here's all of the files. We look at git remote-v, I can see that I have a remote origin which is pointing to my name. Now one very quick way of, of getting other people's changes is to add a new origin to rg0, which would look a bit like this. Git remote add rg0. And at this point I could do git fetch RG0 and it will pull down Richard's copy of the code. But there's another way of doing this which means we don't have to change our origins. So let's um, go over to the GitHub documentation under checking out pull requests. And this is the GitHub way of doing things. So we would do a git fetch and we need a couple of things. So if we just copy that across to the terminal, we need the pull request ID, which appears to be number one. We need the head and then the branch name should be first five. Now we have a branch locally called first five, which represents that work in the pull request. And we can just, well, we can either check that out, git checkout, and now we see a whole lot more work than what we had originally, and I can go into each of these, compile them and check them. Um, I'll give benefit of the doubt here, and I'll say maybe that work's been done already. So let's look at merging this. We could we could work in the master, check out the master. And then one thing that will definitely work is just to do a straight merge. Okay. If we want to see what the changes are between master and Richard's branch, we can just do git log. And so we've got three commits. 
Now, if you've ever committed some work um, to an open source project, they might have asked you to squash your commits. In effect, that takes all of these three commits and reprograms them into one single commit. If we needed to see what files have been changed here, we can use git diff. And that gives us line by line what's changed. And then the other thing that we can do, which is really useful, is stat, which shows us which files have changed and how much they've changed. And as you can see, resistor clock is one of the um, bits of code here that's had a lot of change. Also, uh, random blink. That might mean that we should go and check that out and see. Uh, let's see maybe if it compiles. So right now we're back on master. Back over, now we're on five. So we could try the random blink. And issue a go build. Oh, I'm, I've got an error here because we don't have the, the main package. So go has a neat tool for us, go get download for both. That's going to fit, fetch my Blink library, uh, a library for interfacing with GPIO. And now we can run that again. Okay, so that took about eight seconds, not the fastest. And because this uses the input and output of the, of the Raspberry Pi, we have to run it with sudo. Um, I'm seeing something like a random disco now happening on top of my Raspberry Pi. Really, really colorful. Um, looks good. Looks good to me. Uh, so let's have a, a think about these commits. The last commit I put in was on the 5th of February. And yet we've got these three here, which really correspond to some refactoring. And for the sake of, of this merge, I think we could probably have a look at um, rebasing that. Here we go. So we've got the three commits. What I want to do is squash the first two down by putting S or squash. It might be that you do actually want more than one commit. That's okay. You don't have to squash all of them. What I would like to do is squash two and pick one. Now when I exit, we get this new page which is showing us the commit messages of what we've done so far. And I can get rid of all of these messages really. Just put one final message adding random blink, resistor clock, and solid colors by Richard, okay? Now, when I save this and check out my log, you see that I have my commit and then a single commit here, and they both contain Uh, the differences of those three commits. So by doing the log, I see there's only one difference. By going into a diff, I can see all the code that was added as part of that. And as I said earlier, using dash dash stat gives you a summary and idea of what's changed. Now at this point in time, I can push um, all of the commits I have on master back up to GitHub and then uh, we could close this pull request. If you're wondering, um, even though I push myself into the repository, it doesn't take away the commit from the author. The author will still have uh, his name there in the history and we'll do that right now. Let's check out master. And we can see that that has now been committed into the log and all of the extra examples are present. We can go into one of them and there we go. So what we've done is checked out somebody else's pull request without adding a remote repository. Um, if you want to know the page, 
So on the GitHub help under checking out pull requests locally. Okay, and the command we added was the fetch, which is really useful if you're working on um, a large project like the Docker project and you want to test some code out for someone, you can pull down their remote um, pull request or their remote branch and check it out for yourself. And as we can see, the code did not uh, come up with my name. Um, it says that, that I did the push, but the code is related back to the person that set it up. I will leave you with a quick link now. And um, if, you have a, if you have a blinked and you have a Raspberry Pi, please go ahead and try out one of these examples. There are more left in the Python repository and it would be great to get people helping uh, bring them across and go um, despite taking eight seconds to compile does run really quickly once it is built.